second to load. Yay. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm going to give everybody a second to join. Um, I'm really excited to be here with Gwen and Jesse. It's uh, I, I know this conversation is going to be so good. Um, I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> they're two of my booktube friends, and they're just such lovely human beings. I love their energy and personalities, and I was like, they're perfect <laughs> together. Like, all three of us together, this conversation is going to be awesome. So um, if you want to introduce yourselves and tell, you know, I almost said tell the world. I guess it is telling the world. Tell everybody who's watching, you know, what you do on YouTube, all you're up to. And then their channels are linked in the description of this video. Jesse, do you want to go first? I would love to. Okay. <laughs> um, hello, my name is Jesse. My channel is Ring with Jess. I typically read thrillers and romances, sometimes a little bit of horror, sometimes not. Um, I have my own book club, which Sav has been on before. Um, it is the Sleep When I'm Dead book club, and I plan to have her in the future as well. Um, so yeah, um, and I think that's pretty much it. I don't know. Gwen's really good at pointing out stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like doing on your channel? Like, what are your favorite videos? Oh, yeah. Um, I've been really trying to up my vlog game. So I like to do reading vlogs. I like to do like a little bit of lifestyle in there when I can. If I can remember to pick up the camera, that is the key. Yeah. Um, relatable. Yeah, like book recommendations, uh, TBRs. I'm working on wrap-ups. That's a whole other subject, but Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Of course. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Gwen. My channel name for YouTube is Gwendolyn Kinsinger. You can find me on Instagram at Lavender Mud. I have a bookish podcast called Talk Bookish to Me. Sav has been on there. Jesse has been on there. <laughs> I love my podcast. Um, so I also read um, thrillers, romance, mysteries, uh, nonfiction, memoirs, um, general fiction, I'm um, not a huge fantasy person, but I'm willing to try pretty much anything else. A little bit of horror, a little bit of sci-fi. Um, and I like fantasy in other genres. Like if it's like a thriller that has fantasy elements or, you know, whatever like that. Or I like fantasy that's like witchy or, you know, like those kind of creatures and stuff. But I don't like fantasy like the worlds and all of that. And the yeah. names you can't pronounce. So. Um, on my channel, I like to do uh, vlogs as well. Um, pretty much all of my book recommendations happen over on my podcast, but I do reading wrap up live shows with other creators. That's a lot of fun. Um, and I do like readathon stuff, things like that. Yay. Well, thank you both for being here. I'm so excited. Um, let me bring up some of these comments. I'm so glad, sorry, uh, StreamYard is working. Because last live, it was not working with the comments. But hi, Mel. Yes, I'm so curious to hear everyone's thoughts. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I actually read this one, so I'm prepared. Yay. That's awesome. I feel like I saw so many people reading this book. Like, it just is kind of a viral book. Um, if you're just joining, I guess my I have the book of the month one, so there's no cover on here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So none of this is true uh, by Lisa Jewell. And this, oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> you probably can tell what I think because I'm like smiling already about it. <laughs> Um, let me know in the comments if you have uh, listened to it or read it or done both. Um, how did you consume this book? Um, hello, just finished this last night and can't wait to hear everyone's opinion. Yay. Yes, I finished it last night too. Um, hello, I finished this yesterday and I'm excited to talk about it. So first of all, how did you guys read it? Did you listen to it? Did you read it physically? Did you do both? Yeah, I did both. I read along physically and to listen to the audio. That's how I mainly consume books this, you know, nowadays. I feel like tandem yeah. or hybrid reading, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it's just like my favorite method. And I specifically think doing both with this was like, 
yeah. Chef's Kiss. Yes. The audio book was so epic. So, mm -hmm. but I will, I will want, I do want to kind of touch on that a little bit later on about the audio book. Yes. Because even though it was really good, I have a few gripes. I know exactly what you're talking about. I have a few gripes. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, both read and audio, listen to it. I did audio while reading physically both. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's a lot of boths. Um, I'm going to say I started that trend. I'm just going to say know. it because I ta have talked about it for like the last few years because everybody would be reading audiobooks and I'm like, I cannot do audiobooks. I just cannot because my mind would drift and yeah. I just, and I couldn't like do something else and listen to audiobooks because then my mind would drift. So I'll just try mm -hmm. to sit there and listen to audiobooks and it was not a vibe. So I was like, well, what yeah. if I read the book and listen to the audiobook? Oh, and that's so good. Game changer. Game changer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think that. I read most of this book while doing like other projects like diamond painting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, this one, the, the audio book was so good that I didn't need to read it, but I am also like a hybrid reader as well. Yeah, me too. I will say, and this is a whole nother like tangent, but when I'm listening, I can listen faster than I can read physically. Yes. So if I have it sped like way up, like sometimes I speed it like a ton up, I can't follow along because I'll be overwhelmed. I'll be like, my eyes cannot move this fast. Like uh, it's interesting. So I do like following along with the audio, but I have to have the audio slower than if I just listen. So I kind of did both with this one. Um, agree. The audiobook was very good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Listen to it. That's my favorite way to read now. I love that. Physical book from book of the month. Hi. Um, so I wanted to say, I will give the synopsis of this really quick. Um, I feel like most people have heard the synopsis about this and it's, oh my gosh, by the way, it's crazy. Uh, there's a birthday. So June 8th in here, that's my birthday. I felt that I saw that on your Instagram stories and I was like, no freaking way. <laughs> I was, it was the perfect pick. <laughs> I was shook. I was like, not only is it like my birthday, but also it's like integral to the plot. Like it's not yeah. just like a date, you know, where you're like, exactly. oh, for the triplets. I know. I was like, what? What does this mean? First of all, that's kind of scary. Um, so this is about two women and one of them is a podcaster and the other woman just has kind of a mysterious, strange life. Um, and they run into each other when they're celebrating their, I believe it's 44th or 45th birthday, 45th. Um, and they run into each other at a restaurant and they kind of have a run in with each other and they talk for a second, but then they leave. And then they end up running into each other soon after. And the kind of stranger woman is like, Hey, my life is about to change. I think I would be a really interesting guest on your podcast because she interviews a lot of women. Um, and she was like, okay, I guess I'll go for it. Like this seems like it could possibly be interesting. And as she starts learning more about the character's life, she's like, this is very strange. Um, I'm learning some dark things and it seems like some sinister stuff is going on behind the scenes. So um, the podcaster's name is Alex and the main character's name is Josie. I mean, I guess they're both kind of main characters, but I feel like the main character ultimately is Josie. So hopefully I gave a good synopsis of that. I don't want to give away too much. I felt like on the back of the book, it kind of gave away a little bit too much. Like I re I don't even know if I've read the synopsis to this book yeah. to this day. <laughs> yeah, I don't always, but there's something at the end of the synopsis, if it's the same as what I was seeing on Goodreads, where I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of like a lot of information. Like, Yeah, sure I find that in thrillers all the time, and it's so yeah. frustrating. Yeah, so me too. I usually don't read all of it. I generally like will read out the synopsis if I'm announcing my book club pick, but generally it like just in life. I don't like doing that yeah. as much. So, um, so what did you guys like and dislike about this book? Just no, I got to put up my non-spoiler, uh, banner. Sorry. Um, I liked the pacing of the book and I like that it went between the different women and that it had the Netflix parts in it, uh, mm -hmm. that kept it like interesting. And I read this in one day, I read this 
I started it on reading sprints and I think on Jesse's reading sprints. And then I got off of the reading sprints. I was almost done. And then I stayed up for another hour and finished it. Like I read it start to finish like very quickly. Um, I like how dark it was. I also thought it was a little bit different than Lisa Jewell's other books. So that was Ooh. kind of refreshing a little bit because usually she writes like dual timelines or, you know, stuff like that. And yeah. it didn't really have that in here. I thought it was a little okay. bit different. It still felt like her, but yeah. I don't know. It just felt a little like fresher. Yeah. Yeah. I, I liked it obviously for the audio and like the fully produced and like having two different narrators, like full cast and everything like that. I like when said it felt similar, but also different from Lisa Joel. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of went into this one with like high expectations because people who love Lisa Joel were like this is the best Lisa Joel ever so I'm like this is gonna be awesome or really terrible for me <laughs> so um yeah. but yeah I, I like Gwen said the pacing was really good like it was one of those where like I can keep listening or I could visit. like my jaw was hanging off I would send Jesse messages like what is happening yeah. I just was like know. why is her wearing all this denim yeah denim yeah, yeah, yeah I know <laughs> I was like, <laughs> why does the room like stink? Home. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> there are so many things I was, so I feel like I read just so many thrillers and I get really tired of like boring mm -hmm. tropes. I'm just like, okay, I've heard this a billion times, but there was some stuff in here that we can get more into like with spoilers yes. where I was like, this is new. Yeah. Like, I, haven't read I any thought it was really fresh. Yeah. yeah, it was fresh. I love the Netflix podcast element. The thing about the right. audio book, though, is there was, like, descriptions of what yes. was actually happening yes. before. Like, it would say something like the... Like, it was setting the scene. And, like, the woman is wearing this and blah, blah, blah. And it, they would completely skip over that. And I yeah. was like, this is, this is so well produced. Why is it being skipped over? I'm like, exactly. I'm like, if you're going to have it in the book and you have everything else and you have this full cast narration, you have to have that in there. Because mm -hmm. to me, I know there's people that don't mind skipping over that, <clears throat> Jesse. But <laughs> for me, I'm like, I was stopping the audio every single time yeah. to read that. I would actually, what I would do when I would get to those portions is I would pause the audiobook and read through the whole Netflix thing, including the part that they were going to, you know, voice in the audiobook, And then I would play it. So... Yeah, it that's just so annoying. Me, that drove me nuts. I was like, why? <laughs> I would have to like pause it. And I feel like a couple times I wasn't holding the book. So I was like, well, I'm missing part of this. Like, and it right. was very weird because it was so well produced. Like there would be sound effects. There would yeah. be like background noise. Like if yeah. it would be. Yeah. You know, it out. wasn't integral to the plot. No, I, like you weren't like losing plot. Like if you've only listened to it on audio, you're not missing yeah. anything. But for like a purist over here. <laughs> I like, know. I know it's there and I want to read it. So like right yeah. here, it shows like setting the scene. He walks in, sits down, all that fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, we didn't get that. Yeah. Like, like misses that. And there's like larger sections that it skips over. And I was yeah. like, Yeah. Did it not bother you though? <laughs> well, I'd be like, I could either pause or just keep going. And I realized like I wasn't really missing anything. So I was just like, okay, whatever. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're not really missing anything. It was just irritating to me. That yeah. was like my one gripe with the audiobook. I was mm -hmm. like, it's such a good audio. Because they could even produce it a little bit better. Like have, mm -hmm. you could have heard footsteps like walking on the scene, yeah. you know, or something like that, or them sitting down adjusting their mic or something like right. that. So it was even another opportunity for them to produce it even more real realistically mm -hmm. or you could um, have like a director or like a it could have been someone director. totally it could have it, yeah. it could have been someone like minor I could have read it you know what I'm saying like <laughs> literally anybody could have read those parts it just needed to be an audio I know so I agree annoying. that was the only thing that really bothered me yeah Everything same really good one of the voices I can't remember who it was but it was faster so I had to like yeah. slow down oh, one of yeah. the voices um yeah. I don't remember who it was to be honest yeah. but maybe Josie yeah, I don't remember, but yeah. 
But um, besides that, yeah, I really liked it. Also, you all kind of touched on this. You both have read Lisa Jewel before, and yes. you thought it felt a little bit different. I have not read Lisa Jewel before. This is oh. my first. Oh, oh, girl, you started with the best. I hate to tell you, in my <laughs> opinion, in my opinion. Okay, so I wrote mine down. I have read, how many did I say? I also wrote mine. Four, five, yeah, can you let me eight. know? Like, okay, let us I've read know. eight other Lisa Jewel books. Okay. Or which, attempted, I should say. So... <laughs> I DNF'd Ralph's Party, which was her debut novel. Yeah. It is not a thriller at all. It's something else entirely. And obviously it's her debut and it's terrible because I DNF'd it. So, <laughs> oh, no. you know. so moving on from that. Okay. So I have four that I rated for three stars and three that I rated four stars. So three stars. Then she was gone. Watching you. Mm -hmm. I also gave three stars. Invisible Girl, I gave three stars. And The okay. Girls in the Garden, I gave three stars. And then my four star reads, the first book that I ever read by Lisa Jewell was I Found You. Oh, And that one sticks in my mind so much. It's the one that I always like think about when I think Lisa Jewell, maybe because it's the first one I read. But I rated that one four stars. I rated The Night She Disappeared four stars. And I also rated The Family Upstairs four stars, okay. which I know is an unpopular opinion because a lot of people didn't like that book, but they're wrong and I'm right. So <laughs> those are the <laughs> ones <laughs> that I've read. Um, I have only read four other Lisa Jules and I agreed okay. like this one right here is her best work. Like I agree with the hype. Okay. I read The Night She Disappeared. I gave that one four stars. That was my favorite until this one. Same. I think that okay. one's really, really good. Um, I found you. I found that one to just be okay. I gave it three stars. Um, Invisible Girl. I also got that mostly just because it was a book of the month pick, but I gave that one three and a half stars. It's more like a three, but okay. um, then she was gone. That is probably one of her most popular books. Yeah. But someone spoiled the ending for me. No. Yeah. And I had to read it for like an old book club uh, team challenge and stuff like that. So I knew how it was going to end. I feel like it would be like a four or five star if I didn't know that reading going into gotcha. it. So I gave it yeah. three just because... I knew what was going to happen. I love that book cover, though. Then she was it gone. Really it's really pretty. Oh, that's a bummer. So this, it, you guys both agree that it's her best. Mm -hmm. it is. Also, uh, Nicole yeah. said this was my favorite book as well, or my favorite Lisa Jewell book. I have well. heard that from a lot of Lisa Jewell fans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I feel like I still want to read more, but maybe lower the expectations a little bit. I would say but... The Night She Disappeared is probably yeah. her best next one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, hopefully it just keeps going up. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't always happen because it's <laughs> right. a lot of books that she's read. I know in the book of the month copy and probably in all of it, it has like a whole list yeah. of, yep. of her books. And I'm like, there are a lot. I have the family. What's the one with the egg on the cover again? The family. Um, what is it? The house we grew up in. Yeah, the house we grew up in. That's the, the one that has the egg on the cover. Because I think it has to do with hoarding. It does. And I want does. And the only I don't know why. I know I want to read it too. <laughs> like I'll watch like hoarders like on yeah. like TLC or whatever, and it just like why are we weird? It makes me feel very claustrophobic. Yeah, but you do it anyway. I yeah. know. Yeah. I want to read that. I mean, obviously I have it on my TBR. So yeah. Um, sorry guys. I realized I got behind in comments. Um, I sometimes <laughs> listen while reading, but I'll hop back and forth. Most times listen to audiobook when I'm driving, walking, et cetera, and can listen at three times. 3.5 times the speed. Yeah, I can't listen at 3.5 times, but I feel like my 2.5 times is kind of like my max. Um, and yeah, it's I can't look that fast. Um, hi, how are you? Hello. Um, that's so strange that the audio didn't include those parts. I only listened, so I missed all that. Yeah, see, if you didn't even have the book in front of you, like, you would have never known. Yeah, um, yeah. But if you were like us where we saw it. And we were... some of it wasn't like that long. Like mm -hmm. some of them were shorter, like the one that Jesse showed. But mm -hmm. in this one, it's all this. You miss this whole thing right here. Mm -hmm. I so... do all think that it wasn't in the copy that they got when they recorded it. Right. They get early copies of the books to do the audio books. So like, right. here's another one. Like this one is just this short little thing right here. So some of them are shorter and some of them are longer. But I just think. Yeah. That it was another, it was a missed opportunity. We'll just say yeah, that. <laughs> no, I, I completely agree. 
Um, yes, that annoyed me. And that one voice that was so low, you couldn't hear it. Oh, yeah. I For some reason, I could hear that. But I think it was because I had noise canceling headphones. And that so helps, yeah. that helps a lot. Like I need those when I read. Um, this is my fave Lisa Jewell. Sorry, I read that, but I'll read it again. <laughs> then she was gone was my fave five stars. I think I own that one. And I think I own the Invisible Girl too. Mm -hmm. Question mark. I got them a <laughs> long time ago and I just haven't yeah. bought for whatever reason. Yeah, I know both of those are book of the month. Like probably yeah. so. I have them. I think that's why I do have them. Um, this is my favorite Lisa Jewel of the ones I've read too. Nice. Um, this was my first Lisa Jewel. I know now I want to read more, even though it's the best. I still want to try. <laughs> oh no, then she was gone as twisty. I have only read two. Um, this was the only Lisa Jewel book I ever read. I loved it. I'm interested in her other books now. Nice. Um, okay, so we all kind of talked about the writing style. We enjoyed it, kept you all engaged the whole time. Um, and we talked about, you know, have you guys read it before? I'm sorry. I'm looking at my list. Um, okay. Pacing. We all threw. I can't talk. Flew through it. Kind <laughs> of my life. Flew through it. I read it mostly in one day. Um, I had to start it like the day before, but I finished most of it all in one day. Um, which characters did you like and dislike? I feel like we need to get into spoilers now, though. Yeah. So let me throw up um, my spoiler section banner. So if you haven't read it, I will say goodbye. Unless you want to yeah. be spoiled for some reason. But I would highly recommend. I, I would highly recommend you leave and read the book. Yeah. And come back. <laughs> Actually, we should probably share our ratings before people go. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. That's true. What did Who you guys to go it? first? I gave it four. <sighs> four and five? I gave it four and a half. Yay! Well, yay. I think oh. I I really could be convinced to give it five right. stars. I literally could. Yeah. But there was okay. just something about the ending that. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm so bad at giving things five stars now. Like yeah. if I would have read this like a couple of years ago, I would have given it five stars and maybe I understood. You know what I mean? Like maybe I should just get over my like doubt of because at this point, I'm just a little more critical of books than I was before. So it honestly mm -hmm. could be a five star, but I'm going to keep it a four and a half. It feels pretty good. Um, yay, you gave it five stars, four stars, gave it five. Yeah, in the comments, share what you gave it. Oh my gosh, this is the highest like any of my book club reasons. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, I would rate it a four and a half because my critique is so minor, but I don't do half stars. So I always have to pick and I'm like, well, if it wasn't a full five, then it has to yeah. be a four. <laughs> I know. I should do that with myself too. Just cut out the like half star because it gets confusing. Well, see, sometimes I'm like, I really want to use the half star rating. And then other times I'm like, no, that's just too complicated. Yeah, okay. no, I get it. Would you ever give half star ratings if Goodreads ever switched? The well, I mean, the story graph has it and I actually use both. Okay. But you still do full stars. I still well. The reason why I do full stars is I think it makes my average rating easier at the end of the year. Oh, like I don't know. That makes sense. I don't know. I don't know why I do it. I do it because I'm crazy. I, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! No one gave it below a four. This is incredible. I, I love this. Any negative things about this book from anyone? Yeah. So this may, wait. Honest. Hold on. Actually, did I see a three and a half? I think I might have seen a three and a half. Of no, course, no. Jordan gave it. Jordan <laughs> gave it a three. Jordan, we're going to kick you out of here because we were having a really good time. <laughs> I wonder if there's going to be a sequel. Do you guys think there will be? I do not. <laughs> you don't. Um, I don't. I could see it being a sequel, but I hope it doesn't. Yeah, yeah I think I it ended it in a like, way that there could be a sequel like it's kind of open-ended mm -hmm. but i have to ask a question of jordan sorry i'm just gonna butt in here oh go did you it. have your high your expectations set high for the book because of like hearing other people talk about it because that has ruined some books not ruined but mm -hmm. like ruined what would have been like a four or five star book i've been like mm -hmm. That happened within my dreams. I hold a knife. Everybody was like, oh my gosh, this is so unique. It's so different. And when I read it, I was like, um, three stars. Like it was good, but like, was it that good? No. Yeah. So I just wonder if like, maybe your expectations were set too high or if like, see, 
Yeah, absolutely. I was yeah. expecting a mind blowing ending and was let down. See, that sucks. <laughs> Cause like maybe it would have been four or five stars if she didn't have those expectations going in. So oh, there's a three. And a half. Okay, okay. We're just going to ignore these people. <laughs> <laughs> the sequel for the family of Star. Yeah. See, that's what yeah. I was thinking. I was like, I know she's done sequels before. Also Only one. Like, really, yeah. she did a yeah. Ralph's party kind of thing. But like I said, that wasn't really a thriller. So. Yeah, I looked at that title. I went, what is that title? <laughs> Who is Ralph? Like, <laughs> so random. Um, all right. Let's talk about spoilers because there's so much to get into. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. Oh, you were asking about the characters. Oh, yeah. So who was your, like, what was your journey with these characters? Because okay. I, I had a journey. I literally <laughs> love dark twisted people that are hiding secrets mm -hmm. so i liked alex and i liked josie and mm -hmm. i hated walter obviously because yeah. i was like grooming sob like can you die now but literally yeah. at the end i loved him because yeah. it was like this whole time i'm mm -hmm. really getting into it y'all so y'all better make sure you're out because i'm about to spoil it <laughs> but, like, number one him dying pissed me off the fact that like we thought he was like grooming and like he was doing weird things with the dog her, but he was literally just going in there to game with her. I know. I have mixed feelings about Walter. <laughs> Justice for Walter. Like, yeah. <laughs> no. I, I don't. I do think he was a good father. Yeah, like a wonderful father. Mm -hmm. But I still think it's quite questionable. Like the whole she was sixteen and he met her when she was fourteen. But I honestly, number one, I think that. Josie probably <laughs> lied to him about her age. And number two, I don't think it was like him coming onto her. It was her coming onto him. Yeah. And men are weak. So what do we expect? You know, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> but like, can we talk about Nathan though? Like what a horrible husband. Though. Oh, he was and Alex kept getting like defensive. She was like, yeah. well, he's not a pedophile. It's like, okay, but still he's horrible. He's yeah. literally, and also she was like, he's just been through a lot. It's like. Okay, well, so have so many people, like, everyone's been through a lot. Exactly. Like, you've been through a lot, and you're just going to go on these benders, like, 24-7 with, like, children. I... And then he went on a date with the actress or whatever. Not the date, but, like, she lured him back to the hotel yeah. room. Like, you're a horrible human being. Just didn't yeah. I know. I know. Someone died who could have lived. Yeah. That whole thing was so weird how he started, like, having a heart attack. And she was just like, oh. Cool. Right. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> um, I'll come back and watch the rest when I've read the book. Yes. Oh, Lena, you gotta read it. Um, I was so intrigued by Josie's daughter. That was, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I really did too. Cause she kept time. bringing her the food and not opening the door and saying there's an odor coming from there. And I was like, and it was like, open the door and be like, pick up your socks. Like what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> so I thought, some I was like, does she have her daughter like tied? Oh, I like, thought that is, too. She, like not yeah. able to go to the bath. Like it made me really scared and sad. And honestly, that was like a. It sounds so weird to say, but like a fresh thing in a thriller. Like I haven't read anything like that before, where mm -hmm. it was kind of like you don't see what's in that room for so so long. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there was a little bit of. I personally think it was inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Um. I get what you guys are saying. Like she could have lied about her age, but I didn't like Walter. I thought he was a good dad. Yeah, I think a good dad. Like yeah. Definitely a good dad. Also a little bit like blurry about like the relationship. Like we didn't see how it all happened firsthand. We learned about well, it. Right. See, that's why I'm just saying, I don't know if I believe any of it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. any of the story that she told, because exactly, because that's the thing. We didn't get his side of things. We really mm -hmm. didn't hear from him. We heard a little bit from her mom. And then even her, we didn't get like the answers. Like she mm -hmm. wouldn't give a straight answer. So we only really got Josie's side of yeah. things. So how do we know she's not lying about everything? I know like mm -hmm. the ending twist. So one of my questions was like, what did you guys think about the ending twist? And also I should ask, like, do you even believe her? Cause at the end she said that that girl, I think her name was Brooke. Yeah. Brooke. Was Roxy killed Brooke. And that was what they were covering up. I personally believe it because of Walter's like reaction and like how he just like paled and he started having a heart attack. How I read it was that Roxy killed Brooke. Yeah, that I believe that. Cause at See. the end, 
I you think and I've 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 read a couple of interviews that Lisa Jewell has done with like magazines and stuff or mm -hmm. blogs and stuff. Yeah. And she did allude to that being the case. Do you uh, disagree? Did you get like you don't believe Josie at all, Jesse? Mm -hmm. I don't believe her. Like none of this is true. <laughs> Like, biggest spoiler ever. But no, I just... Also, like, once a killer, always a killer. So, like, she also, like, killed Nathan. Yeah. So, true. It's... I love this kind of book. Because people can have, like, opposite opinions. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Like, charity vibe. Like, it's... It's like... Yeah. To, like that's what I told her. I was like, is it, like, team letter or team manuscript? Yeah. Like... That's how I felt at yeah. the end. Yeah, Nathan sucked. Um, not justice for Walter. The, the age, age gap. gap that, think, you have to form your own opinion on that. I don't I think, think that. It's it, not, I, I'm okay for an age gap. Do I think yeah. it was gross that she was like underage that's and what it was I, an age gap? Yes, right. No. Yes, that's that was, was gross. I think it's I'm saying we don't even know if that was true, y'all. We don't even know yeah. if it was true. I guess it was never confirmed like their ages now. Like they said he looked old. Yeah. But I guess the mom did say, right? The mom did say that she, she alluded to it, but like, I, I agree with that. Like, I'm not but okay also, for that. Like, her mom, like, what mother is okay with that in a way? I mean, I know there's, there's people out there, but I'm just like, you're okay with your daughter? Like, okay. also, it was her ex boyfriend, which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> like, is what the hell? This book, um, <laughs> Wait, sorry. I read this comment. Um, Nathan was horrible and she gave him too many chances. Yes. Basically, everyone was bad. Agree. That's, I love that's books. The deal. I don't too. want to see in person. I think I everybody was morally gray. That's the thing. They had good parts and then they had bad parts. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Going, going back to Nathan, when the whole dinner party scene and Gwen was like blowing up my phone, she's like, this is the most uncomfortable dinner <laughs> red but yeah. i knew i knew nathan wasn't going to show up that was so wrong yeah. he promised her and i was like <sighs> yeah. i know the whole time i was shocked so at the end when she was like i get she's sad like it was her husband he died but she was like i almost like left him but i wanted that choice it's like girl what <laughs> i, I I know. It made it easier for you, if anything. I know. I was like, what is that? I thought it was such a weird, weird. Like, thing to mm -hmm. say. Um, the odor yeah. was dead. Yeah, that was it. I just um, really didn't understand the whole odor thing. Yeah. So many warning signs, but she wanted to finish that podcast. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is so funny. That's so true. Because she was <laughs> like, I'm totally scared of this Josie, this Josie lady. But hey, do you want to come over and film for my podcast? <laughs> I know it was so weird and she was like oh like I don't know how to tell her she can't stay here oh, yeah. oh my gosh so hard you can be honest like what do you think she's gonna murder you I mean to be fair she did she like did. look through her window and like take and and but, get the mail out of her trash can or whatever yeah the magazine that, or whatever it was that was the part that was the most unbelievable ironically to me was the fact that she knew she was taking all her stuff she yeah. saw her on her camera being like stalking her and she was like oh yeah you can stay here it's like <laughs> no ma'am i don't understand it tortures me that we don't know anything that right has. and that's why it's four and a half slash four stars <laughs> and that's also i mean i i loved it I gave it five stars but like verity like mm -hmm. right you don't know i know and Usually, it's so funny. It can go either way. I can love it or hate it, and I loved it in this situation. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, it does. It does go love it or hate it, and I didn't love it in this because I thought there was too many unanswered questions. Mm -hmm. Like, was Josie ever telling the truth? I don't know. Who really <laughs> killed Brooke? I don't know. It's just all your guesses. There were so yeah. many things left mm -hmm. to the imagination. Very, very, very unreliable narrator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um ending makes me think the daughters are lying See, yeah that's what i that's what i think i think the daughters are lying too um because they're probably like why do i want to protect this mother who's like a horrible mother you yeah. know but like, i also think everybody lied at least once about something probably yeah for sure
Yeah. I kind of believe the end. Yikes. Um, <laughs> but wasn't he the mom's boyfriend? So he was, old. yeah, yeah, he was the mom's boyfriend. Um, and I think old enough to be her father. I think yeah. that was, they were yeah. even saying like, he looks like an old man. Like when people in the very beginning, when she went to the gastro pub with him and yeah. sat down, like most people didn't think that was her husband thought it was like her dad or something. Like yeah. That. yeah. I think the like messed up part about it was she was like 14. If that part is true. Yeah. Like, is the fact that she was 14 and he was like, what, like 40 something? I think. Yeah. Like yeah. One, I think. Which is like, oh, yeah. That's yeah. Well, yeah. however young she was, it was too soon. Yeah. Too, too much. Too soon. Too much <laughs> um, what was your favorite part of the story? Do you guys have something that stands out to you or like what kept you the most interested? <laughs> I think. I don't know if there was like a scene per se, mm -hmm. but I liked how I just had so many questions the whole time, like mm -hmm. just about everything. It was just the yeah. questions that kept me turning the pages. Um, and then I obviously really liked the Netflix parts of it to kind of like, because at first I didn't catch on that it was the Netflix original or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I just thought that was the podcast, but then... I was like, oh, so this means that the podcast has already happened mm -hmm. and now we're here and something happened. And that's what we're just so it was like kind of piecing it together yeah. myself, even though it was kind of yeah. obvious in the book. Yeah. yeah. I thought the dinner scene was probably my favorite because yeah. it was just so uncomfortable because yeah. not only does Alex feel uncomfortable with Josie and her very much older husband, but like Josie's like taken like stabs at her because her husband isn't here or says he's on his way that was so good have you all seen the uh the dinner party episode in the office no you know, i don't think so i've seen the whole series but i'm trying to think of what it it's is the most uncomfortable thing you've ever oh, seen oh i think i know what you're about. And it's, it's so like it was giving me those vibes but it's not a comedy yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it was so uncomfortable. And then when the little kid was like, remember, she took the, uh, what's his name, Walter, into the podcast. Yeah. Theater, and she was listening in. Mm -hmm. And the little yes. kid was like, Mom, why was she listening in? She's weird. That was, I did not like that. That was so creepy. Mm -hmm. It was so creepy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So many things were just so creepy. I feel like they should make this into a show. I feel like. Totally. Oh, it would be so good. Like it would translate so well into a mini series or something like that. It would be so good. Um, okay. What would you change about the story? If anything, I just, <laughs> like I said, not to be the end horse here, but that ending. Yeah. I just wanted it. Like, I don't, I like ambiguous endings. I like books that make you think I like, you know, that verity thing where you're like, Oh, is it this or is it this? But I just felt like so many things were unclear at the ending. Um, and then plus with the title of the book, it's like, you, you don't know what's going on. So. Yeah. 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 I liked everything. Like I had really, I mean, you can like, there's some things like you can poke fun at, but like, I yeah. think, it was, I mean, I mean, I gave it five stars. I thought it was amazing. Yeah. I agree. I wouldn't have really changed anything. I thought it was really well done. Um, agreed. It's like too many variables in an experiment. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I get, I totally get what you're saying, but for some reason it didn't bother me. I yeah. was like, I kind of like, <laughs> like, oh, like I get to choose what I yeah. think. Of it right. Like my yeah. thoughts. Um, I also kind of like going back to what you're saying, Gwen, like it was almost like a true crime element when you mm -hmm. realize that the podcast had already happened. Mm -hmm. And I really love books that have like not only podcast elements, but true crime elements too. Mm -hmm. Because I don't personally enjoy reading true crime, but sometimes I kind of want to get like fictionalized true crime. And so I got that from this book and I thought it was like really nice to have that in a book. Mm -hmm. I love that. I want more of that in books. Um, they end up being some of my favorite books generally when those two elements are thrown in. So I yeah. really like that. Um, do you all have book recommendations that are like similar to the vibe of this book? Yes. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I need some book recommendations. Go for it, Jesse. Um, so I have four. Um, two, two of them kind of go together. I already so know what you're going to say for that one. Okay. <laughs> So if you're looking for like another book with podcast elements, mm -hmm. I would say The Night Swim in Dark Corners because um, it's fully produced. Um, I don't, I think it's got like sound effects, kind of like the Netflix and everything like that. Uh -huh. You can read them separately. Um, 
it just follows the same true crime podcaster. Mm -hmm. Um, and it doesn't, I don't, I personally don't think it spoiled anything. If you read the second one, it doesn't spoil anything for the first one. It just like yeah. mentions what the other season was. If you want something more darker of that, go with the night swim. And if you want something like not as dark, go with dark corners. Yeah, I agree. Dark, uh, the night swim has to do about like a rape trial. So yeah, that's night swim. Yeah. I wish that dark corners. dark corners was darker. I haven't yeah. read it. But that's why I'm less drawn to it. I, I rated both of them five stars. Okay. That's good. I did five and four. Because I love the night swim. And mm -hmm. like it was very disturbing. And that's yeah. like what I'm drawn to. Yeah, but I feel like in I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts, and some of the cases are darker, and some of them like aren't as dark, you mm -hmm. know? So it was felt know. real. Huh? So it felt like real, like yeah. Um, if you want to read about like an unhinged woman, um, I would say The Secret She Keeps by Michael Robotham. Um, and it has to do with like two women who are pregnant and kind of having very similar stories and they're getting to know one another, but one of them seems to be a little unhinged um, and kind of has like a kind of a weird twisted backstory. And then if you're looking for more grooming, um, this doesn't really have the same vibes, but I would say my dark Vanessa by oh, what is, is it something Castro? No, it's no. Is it Kate something Stewart? I think is. Yeah. You guys can keep talking. I'll find it. Okay. Yeah, it's my dark Vanessa. Okay. Also um, the last housewife by Ashley Winstead has not only the grooming, but it has, um, it's about like someone that has like a dark past who invites a podcast host, Kate Elizabeth Russell for yes. my dark Vanessa, mm -hmm. um, a pod or that invites a podcast host into their lives and like secrets are revealed and stuff like that. So it has like the podcast kind of elements and kind of the grooming elements in it. Um, another one, I was also going to say the night swim in dark corners, but another one is not so perfect strangers by L S Stratton. And this one is also about two women in less than ideal marriages. Mm. That's that one. Um, and then another one that I thought, um, is things we do in the dark by Jennifer Hillier is a little bit because, yeah. Um, the main character has this like long, dark, complicated uh, past. And then you have so many questions like while you're reading it and it kind of doesn't all come together until like the end type thing. Yeah, no, the writing style in this kind of gave me Jennifer Hillier vibes, but like if it was less disturbing. That's mm -hmm. actually what I was thinking throughout. I was like, I'm really enjoying this because it feels a lot like a Jennifer Hillier book. And mm -hmm. I really enjoyed her books. Um, and then I also want to recommend Girl 11 by Amy Suter Clark. I've mm -hmm. talked about this quite a few times, but it has some really good podcast elements. I know, the one I keep meaning to I know. <laughs> it um, feels like you're listening to a true crime podcast, which I really enjoy. That You know, that's really good. Um, I don't have many other ones that come to mind. I mean, I guess kind of Sally Hepworth's writing a little bit like in a tiny way, but I don't know. I, I couldn't really think of any other ones. So I'm glad you guys came with like I have one more. It has a very small podcast element, probably similar to um, actually no, but it was one of your old um, one of your previous book club discussions. And it is mm -hmm. what lies in the woods. Cause you have. Oh, a that, that was the one that me and Sav did. Yeah, I know. I was like. And it's yeah. one of my favorite thrillers of the year. So. <laughs> yeah. That's funny to me. And it does have like a true crime. Yeah, it does, <laughs> there were very similar true crime things that have happened. <laughs> yeah. That's so interesting. I didn't even think about that one. Yeah. I know you love it. <laughs> I do love it. I feel so bad that I didn't like it. But yeah, I think that's a really good recommendation. Yeah. Thank you for those recs because I'm definitely going to check some of those out. Um, I think we've touched on most of the questions yeah. that I had kind of prepared for this. Um, do you guys have any last thoughts? Like it could be spoilery. It could just be okay. general thoughts. <laughs> Things Would you happen. ever hang denim curtains up? No, <laughs> absolutely not. That I do love denim. I love denim jackets. Obviously, I love jeans. I yeah. have denim dresses and denim shirts and all that. Yeah. But like, 
denim window dressings <laughs> absolutely not and like she had like the denim purse and the denim all this like yeah. no 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 <laughs> yeah I was like this is giving me the vibes of like Britney Spears like wearing her all denim like with Justin, with Justin Timberlake day. like mm -hmm. the, that couple it's I was just thinking how vibes. heavy these curtains have to be <laughs> Yeah, and didn't she have, like, a dog? Like, was this dog, like, wearing denim? I, they, it was not discussed, but I was like, I bet she has denim stuff for her dog. Oh, my goodness. I was I just also cannot. getting really annoyed with her taking her dog literally everywhere. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, I love my dogs, but, like. And I love Charlie, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a little, it was a little much. I was like, okay, yeah. this woman is a lot. <laughs> um, let me see. Spotify has all the podcast element. It's called I'm Your Birthday Twin, like the book. So if you didn't listen to the audio, it's the actual clips. Wait, why am I not understanding this comment? Spotify has all the podcast elements. Oh, is it like literally on Spotify? Um, <gasps> Um, oh wait are the clips like on oh i, I have spotify no uh -huh. okay that makes more sense i'm gonna look it up because no you're totally so no angry. don't apologize my brain just like was not sometimes i don't <laughs> what, what was it called again um i'm your, I'm birthday. your birthday twin oh that's cool oh Thanks. it is oh cool. <gasps> seriously oh There's my gosh too <gasps> look that's so cool. Oh, my God. Wait, wait. Oh, my goodness. How many episodes is it? Four. Four. I'm listening to this afterwards. This is so fun. It even says, like, some of you may follow Alex Summers for her previous podcast series, All Women. Some of you may not. This podcast is incredibly different. In 19... Or in 19. In 2019, Alex Summers <laughs> 1920. Spent, I was like, what the heck? In 2019, Alex Summers spent time interviewing a woman called Josie Fair for what she thought was going to be a lighthearted podcast on the theme of being a birthday twins. As you all know by now, that project was shelved abruptly as a real life collided with the podcast and things turned very, very dark. It's taken months for Alex to feel ready to revisit the podcast in its aftermath, but she's ready now. Ha this is hi. I'm your birthday twin. This is That's so Thank cool. Thank you so much for telling us about that. I'm so excited. I need to check that out too. That's amazing. How long is it? Um, um, it's just, th it's four episodes and I think they're, oh. They're 11, 10 minutes, nine minutes, and then 28 minutes. So is it all from the book or is it? Yeah, like it says like, um, it has a disclaimer. It says, um, this podcast has been created using extracts from the audiobook of Lisa Stuhl. Da, 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 oh. da, and if this is true. So I think it's basically exactly what's in here, but like, yeah, the episode, cool. I think that's so cool. cool. And I wonder if they add more stuff. In. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. We'll all have, but to I love that they even have like a, I can't even show it because it won't blow up, but they even have like a little podcast like cover art. That's so cool. Wait, I think I saw this somewhere. Like I'm, I just didn't make that connection that, oh, it's from the book. That's so cool. That also, it is. I'm a 90s grab, but no to denim curtains. Yeah, this <laughs> is so heavy. How would they not fall off the rack? That's what I'm thinking. Like 24 seven. <laughs> well, thank you for telling us about that. <laughs> Is that so cool? I love exactly that. like the audible version. Yeah, okay. I love that. I'm still That's listening awesome. to it. <laughs> That's so cool. I love that. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you once again for being here. Um, I'm glad we picked such a good book. I know. <laughs> I'm really happy. I, I mean, uh, all of us loved it basically. Yeah. This has never happened. <laughs> this is a historical <laughs> moment. <laughs> historical <laughs> moment in the lights of the club. I love it. Um, both of their information, Gwen and Jesse, is in the. Let me take off my spoiler section. <laughs> this is not a spoiler. These are just facts. Um, they're in my. Wow, I've never been so bad at hosting my own <laughs> my own live before. Please look in the description. That's what I'm trying to say. That's where we are. <laughs> oh my gosh, the struggle bus. It's a struggle bus, but it's like a good struggle bus because we all loved it. So yeah. it's like, okay, I love this so much. Um, thank you guys for being here. Thank you so much. There's a lot of people watching too. I feel like so many people read this book. That makes me very, very happy. So thank you all for being here. 
All right. Yeah. Thanks for having us. It was such a fun discussion. Great book. Love it. (laughs) Yay. All right. I'm going to end the stream. Bye.